Hello and welcome to the Shasta County Arts Council Visual Artist Spotlight for the month of August. My name is Daniel Hill and we are here with Carlo Henry, founder and creative director of The Art Hunger here in Redding, California. Uh, How's it going, Carlo? Hey, Daniel. Thanks for having me. Hey, so do you want to briefly just kind of introduce yourself to the listeners? Maybe tell them who you are, what you do, where you came from? Well, first of all, I consider myself an artist and I'm a creative by nature. I'm a person that wants to make stuff. I'm a Reading-based artist. I feel like after seven years of living in Reading, I'm part of the community and we've been doing cool stuff. I went on to your Art Hunger website and found that awesome little bio section. And I noticed that you are from Barcelona, Spain, and then you went to school and studied engineering in Mexico and art history in Texas. I think that's a pretty wild journey, and I'd love to hear a little bit about it. My parents met in Barcelona, Spain. My mom is from Sevilla, Spain. My dad is from Querétaro, Mexico. My two brothers and I were the result of that marriage. When I was 13, my dad moved us to Mexico. He started working for the government. My parents didn't want me to do anything creative. Uh, My dad wanted me to be a doctor like him. Uh, My mom is a lawyer. I ended up going to school for electronic engineering and communication but it was not my calling. So the day of my graduation, I went to my parents. I'm like, hey, here's the diploma. This is what you wanted me to do. I'm out. So I moved to Arlington, Texas, and I went to school there. I ended up studying studio art and art history at the University of Texas in Arlington. And then after 15 years of living in that area, I moved to California. So now that you're here in Reading, When we talk about Carlo, I think there's two facets that really interest me. The first facet, which is you as an artist and the work that you put out. I see vibrant colors that pop and catch your eye and things that invoke positive feelings. And then there's also the other the other half, I think, which is sort of the curator, the collaborator, the person that brings people together and puts on these exhibits. So I'd kind of like to touch on those two things. For sure. Uh, I feel like people tend to believe in the artist that suffers. We've all gone through that. If you see my paintings when I was in my teens and 20s, I was a torture artist. My first contact with art was going to church and seeing this Renaissance paintings. I went to Catholic school, so my life was surrounded by big paintings of Jesus and virgins and angels and bleeding hearts. So that was what I knew. At least to me, that was art. As a young gay person, at least in the late 90s, was not too common to see. So a lot of these things were reflected in what I made. But once I moved to the States, even though I carried that on with me, there was not really like opportunities for emerging artists in DFW at the time to showcase other than contemporary, modern, abstract art. And I ended up finding this group of artists that were underground. They were alternative, graffiti even. As an outsider, as a non-American, we have a very like specific idea of what pop art is, especially American pop art. And at least growing up, we all wanted to meet E.T. and be one of the Goonies. And we consumed the media of the 80s and 90s. And that was the idea, at least that I had. And I know that many people that live outside the States have of the States. And coming in here, that's that was the base I started making like happy stuff when I felt accepted and part of something. And up to this day, I want to make stuff that makes people smile. I can put a little message in there, but not in your face kind of message. I can express what I want to say. Um, At least to me, it's very important visibility of people of color, minorities and queer people. So I kind of put those things in, in my paintings, but not as in... Like here. No, it's just more of like, enjoy what you're seeing. It's funny because when you see artists, especially people that start painting, we all hit the same points, regardless if we're the same age or not, or if people went to school or not, people hit the same points. I get to see it all the time now with hanging the shows at the Art Hunger. It's just, oh, 
I know this artist is at this point in, in their life because they're doing this and they're, they're, they're going to learn to do something else and find themselves, or maybe not. The, the cool thing about art is that you should make what you enjoy. Now that I'm older, I'm like, ah, life is too weird and too unpredictable to just be worrying and making stuff just because you should do it. Just make stuff for yourself and maybe if someone else likes it, it's even better. Let's talk a little bit about the art hunger. How long have you been in this really cool space? How can people get involved? Uh, yes. So the art hunger is a project. It's not a program. It's not, we're not a nonprofit. We're not a business. It's a project that started with wanting to showcase people making stuff in the area. I believe that when people come together and show their strength, they make a bigger impact. I didn't want to be the only one. And to this day, I tell the artist, if you didn't bring your work, it would be just my piece sitting there by itself, and it would be kind of lame. Even before it was the art hunger, it was just ideas to bring people together, to show what they were doing, to showcase those people. And along the way, we got to do pop-up shows and Maker's Market with Turtle Bay, with businesses in downtown. It wasn't until February 2020 when we gave it officially the Our Hunger name. It was never about me. I wanted to make it about us. But there was this opportunity with actually the Arts Council had this mini grant program, which I applied to. And the idea was to get that grant so we could rent some spaces in downtown, places that were not being in use. Viva Downtown heard about the project and they called me in. And I had to prove that this thing was a good idea, not just for what I was doing, but also with Viva Downtown. Yeah. The first show at the, at the IOF, we were supposed to open at five. By 4.45, there was a line outside and we had to open the doors. It was a surprise that almost like out of a, out of a movie or a cartoon, you know, seeing people coming to the desk and like, hey, like handling money to us. Like, we want to get this piece and that piece. People taking pieces off the wall. Oh my goodness. And we were like, what is happening? Like, how, how, why? It was a surprise for us if the community hadn't responded the way they did on that first show. I think that would have been the end of the summer gallery. We proved to Viva Downtown that this was a viable project that people were ready for it. And that gave us the opportunity to work on the second one and then the third one. To this day, I, I feel like we're learning how to do things better for everyone. To this day, we're still a project. We're still working with Viva Downtown. We have access to the IOF. We call it like a residency during the summer and we showcase artists. The way we do it is we put, we put out a call. Our teams are always team shows as in thematic. We put out a call, people send us an email with the, the photos of their work. At the end of the call, we select the works, we call the artists and they bring the work, we put them on the wall and we have a party to, to celebrate the show. This year we are, we've done already three of them. We're going for the fourth one. It's called Boogie Nights, a disco 70s art show. We've always done kind of like a decade show. We had the 90s, we had the 80s, now it's the 70s. And after that, we're going to keep doing um, the Halloween show. We're kind of saving something for, for November, mm -hmm. um, but it's going to be like the most ambitious show up to now and, and coming back with the Winter Gallery in December. Well, that's really exciting. What a great way to wrap up the summer, though, with a little bit of disco boogie. I mean, that should be really fun. We want to have, um, like, at the the day of the opening, it's going to be a, a gallery regular opening from 5 to 8. But then at 8, we're going to turn off the lights, turn on the disco ball and the music, and have a... Um, a dance. So that's how we're going to celebrate the end of the summer. And what I want to encourage people to do is come on down to the Shasta County Arts Council at Old City Hall and check out our typeface exhibit. You'll see a few pieces by Carlo and um, many other artists. Look up the art hunger on Google or something and 
um, you'll find the website and you'll see the call to artists. If you want to submit something for the disco show, I'm sure you guys are all over social media. I know you have Instagram and yeah, Instagram and, and Facebook. It's kind of like the way we, we do most of things. Like we put stuff on the website and just kind of direct people to the artist calls. Yeah. And of course, stop by during this show, which is the, the sci-fi art show. We have, 65 artists on display um a lot of a lot of people brought super cool stuff we have all mediums all ages weirdly enough for this show we got out of the 65 we we have 26 artists that are under 18 from eight years old to 17 and come and check out their work and support this younger local artists that are just entering the the art scene and let's give them like a good welcome and support what they do and just stop by and check it out and then after that or before that come to the to the arts council and check out their their show what else do we have anything else to to chat about Mm -hmm. i I think that kind of sums it up yeah just just support local artists there's a lot of people making stuff in town and not just not just paintings or sculptures or stuff that you can put in a gallery there's a lot of people doing theater musicians uh, people writing poetry we really need to nurture everyone that is making something because that's that's what makes us uh, more diverse and rich in culture community so support whoever you know make something and encourage them to come out and showcase what they do Thank you.